So let's talk about, or I should say explore, armor class in Icewind Dale. And, and we're going to pull in, for a comparison, Baldur's Gate. And we're going to pull in Neverwinter Nights, kind of the digital implementations of, of D&D, even though armor class is completely different compared Icewind Dale to Neverwinter Nights. It's interesting to see the different ways of approaching it. So Icewind Dale versus BG, no spoilers. Both are set in the D&D universe, or I should be more specific, the advanced Dungeons & Dragons universe. You're going to fight certain iconic monsters. I don't want to give anything away. Combat exists. Combat is there. But the difference between the two is, while there certainly is uh, side stories, a main quest, things to explore, the density of monsters that you fight is very, very different. Icewind Dale tends to be a more mass combat game. There are numerous places where the game throws a lot of monsters at you, a lot of volume of dice. I mean, just, just pause for a minute and think every one of those monsters is rolling a d20 at some point. It's going to hit you. It's going to bypass armor class just on lucky rolls. It's one thing if you're fighting one or two monsters, they get a lucky roll okay. But if there's 10 or 15 surrounding you plus um, ranged-based monsters, that's a lot more of a lucky roll. So it's a shift. Armor class becomes a lot more important in Icewind Dale as opposed to Baldur's Gate. And uh, you know what that means for Baldur's Gate is the encounters are different. They tend to be a little bit more focused, um, more of a tactica or involving certain powers as opposed to just kind of brute force. Although those exist in Dale also. Armor class. You want to get it as low as possible. I mean, that's kind of D&D &D 101. D&D &D 102 is you'd want to get it as high as possible if we're playing 3.x or higher going into Neverwinter Nights. But the challenge, of course, with Icewind Dale is you want to protect yourself from those lucky hits. If I've got 20 goblins attacking me, stuff's going to get through even if my armor class is low. So you have to start making some decisions where you can never really get it low enough. Um, let's say I have a fighter, I've got a monk, and I've got a mage. The fighter, I'm going to get low pretty fast, pretty quick. Uh, let's just say it's a shield. We've got some plate armor. I've got some magic armor. The monk doesn't use armor, but it has natural adjustments to its armor class, and I would supplement that with rings and amulets, you know, plus something, something to bring down that armor class. And the mage is entirely reliant on rings, amulets, plus something, something, or bracers. So when I find that, that ring, the challenge is, in Icewind Dale, the mage is never going to get low enough. I'm just, the Thacko that some of these monsters have, even if it's high, they're rolling lots of dice, there are mobs coming at you, there's tons and tons of missile weapons, there's some pretty epic stuff going on in the game. The mage is never going to get low enough. So I want to put the primary items on my fighters, on the stuff that's dealing the most damage. In terms of the monk, I see this with the monk. We should also bring in the bard. Through armor class gets okay, but it's slower to develop, and it's going to take a while to get it low enough. They're going to take more hits in general. So I find rather than trying to bring that down with the um, with a plus one ring or an amulet or a helmet or something, something, it's better to focus, totally maximize your fighter, frontline fighter based and, and reserve any healing pots or heals for that second line, you know, for looking at monks and bards because they're going to have to get up there and mix things up. Eventually, they'll catch up. And then, of course, mages and uh, possible uh, other classes that don't utilize armor. I'm just not going to get low enough. Now, well, I should say they'll be the last to get that because I'm keeping them, in theory, out of line. I'm keeping them back. This is where we get into, of course, the primary defense of the mage is going to be, um, the primary defense of the mage is going to be invisibility. It's going to be blurs. It's going to be displacement. It's going to be alternate spells of moving, not to really get hit in the first place with how it plays and how it activates. Now, how does that compare to Neverwinter Nights, the D&D 3.5, 3.x type rule set to pull that in and see that shift? Well, what's interesting in the current edition of D&D, an offshoot of 
3.5, or I should say 3.0, this idea that um, armor class stacks, you can get it high enough in the beginning where you avoid most attacks, most things miss. I mean, look, it's D&D. It's always going to be that, that natural 20. There's always going to be that, that lucky to hit. It's always a possibility. But what you see with Neverwinter Nights is um, eventually the adjustments to attack and some of the monsters get so high, armor class becomes irrelevant. You reach a certain point where even as a fighter jacking it up, it becomes irrelevant. You're going to get hit more often than not. So damage reduction becomes absolutely massive. A damage reduction is survivable. Resistances. Um, massive pools of hit points. You know, toughness and, and stuff like that. Massive. And the mages need to ghost armor up and invisibility and, and that type of stuff. Uh, absolutely. Port that back over to Icewind Dale. The first thing is not to get hit, which is why certain character classes uh, like Defender and things like that that offer damage reduction or characters that are going to have a resistance to damage reduction, if you get those up with a high armor class, they become absolute beast mode because they're harder to hit in the first place. And then when they do get hit, there's the damage reductions. And most of the classes that have that, not all of them, but most, have a big hit point pool to begin with. That's that's just, just an absolute beast to try and tear through for the game to tear through. But understanding the, the difference between armor class in Icewind Dale and Baldur's Gate. You play one, you're probably going to play the other. Same character classes, a lot of the same monsters, the same AD&D rule set, but certain things that you can get away with or encounters that you can survive in BG, it's a lot challenging. It's a lot more challenging. It's a lot different in Icewind Dale. 